Uh, all right, wow. Kevin Cronin's been our guest. Kevin, could we talk? I, I know that you, you, first of all, you talked about how it's important for you to get a laugh from a, from a comedian. <laughs> But also, can I ask you to close up with one last song after you tell this story? Yes. Is that possible? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so Fair deal. Who is, I, I meant to ask this earlier, but when you mentioned that you have a list of the times that you made comedians laugh. Do you have one that stands out more than the others? Um, well, I do. It's, an, it's a pretty impressive list, and, and I, and, but I'll save that for the book. So, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> i got to save something for the book. When is but, the, by the way, when, when, is the, when is the book due to come out? Or if you're still working on it, probably 2021, I would imagine? I would have to finish in order for it to come out. I would yeah. first have to finish it. That makes That's sense. really kind of the problem. Uh, um, I'm on my, I believe this is rewrite number eight oh, that I'm Jesus. just about to finish. But, but in my defense, I heard that uh, Springsteen, whose book I didn't read because I didn't want to be unduly influenced. Uh, I heard he did nine and that it took him seven and a half years. So okay. I'm, I'm three and a half years in. Started as an accident, of course. Um, but, all right, so comedians. I love comedians. I have the utmost respect for the stand-up comedian. It's the hardest job in the world, as we, as we talked about earlier. So, but to get a laugh is amazing. So, all right, so my thing is to try to get a laugh from a comedian. So I, my song, Can't Fight This Feeling, comes on the radio as Ryan Gosling, actor Ryan Gosling, and uh, and director Nicholas Refn, R E F N, highly regarded uh, director. Uh, they've always wanted to work together, so they get together for dinner in L.A. and and Ryan is sick, and the dinner doesn't go well, and they're in this car, and they're driving home, and there's awkward silence. Gosling goes for the radio, can't fight this feeling comes on. And at that moment, both of them come up with this idea for a movie. And it's called Drive, yeah. right? So the movie is Drive. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, you know, fast cars, you know, it's not a comedy. Albert Brooks plays like the baddest, badass bad guy you know, totally against type. You know, Albert is one of the funniest guys in the world. Right. So he plays this, he doesn't have one funny line in the movie. He's just a total a-hole. So, all right. So I get invited, my wife and I get invited to a party, uh, you know, like a, I don't know, something to do with the movie. And we're seated, we're in a pretty small room, not a huge group. We're, sit we're seated at a table for eight. There's other comedians in the room at different tables. The table next to mine, I'm literally back to back. I, I get up to pee. I come back and I notice it's freaking Albert Brooks. So I'm like, I'm so close and yet so far away. So I, I'm, I'm at my table and I'm, and I, and I walk around, I, to, you know, to, you know, when you see people, you know, at one of those parties, you walk up to their table, you say hello, but I didn't have the guts because Albert Brooks was right next to me to get up and go over to his table. Just, I, I don't know. So, and I couldn't think of anything to say and I'm, you know, and you know, I'm wanting to get a laugh. If I go there and stiff for Albert Brooks, it's like, it's going to ruin the night. So, yeah. so here we are. We're one of the last ones to leave the party. We're out, outside of Chateau Marmont. And it's this beautiful old hotel with like a cobblestone driveway that comes up. And that's where they, the, the, the valet brings your car. So Lisa and I stand there, we're talking. And then up across the driveway walks, I see over out of my peripheral vision, it's Albert Brooks and his wife. I say to Lisa, I'm like, Lisa, you're, you're not going to believe who stand. Don't look. Albert Brooks is standing right there. She, she goes, is he talking to his wife? Cause, Cause I'm like, you know, this is my chance. You know, she goes, is he talking to his wife? I go, no. All right. As long as you don't interrupt him, you can, you can make your move. And I should know this cause I've been on the other. So you also know how to talk to human beings. Uh, well, yeah, they, yeah, sometimes. So, so I walk across the thing. I walk up to Albert Brooks. I extend my hand and, and he extends his. So that's a good sign. And I go, hi, Albert. My name's Kevin. Saw the movie. You were hysterical. <laughs> and he literally did a spit take because it was, you know what I mean? That, right. You know. <laughs> right. Yes. Course, I mean, nice. that was a, that, that was, 
that was comedy writer type shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, not that I'm, I'm, I'm semi pro all the way, but <laughs> I got a spit take out of Albert Brooks. It was, it. it was one of the pinnacles of my uh, <laughs> career. And there's, but there's plenty more. Hey, we're gonna and get there's only the- one way to find yeah. out yeah. the rest of them. To hear the whole conversation, subscribe for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts, or visit nevernotfunny.com.